I thank the Lord that we are here and that is because we are here to acknowledge that we need help. We need help. That is why we are here. We acknowledge that things are not going as they ought to go. We are not making the most out of life as we ought to be. Things are black and dark in our world. We ourselves are being oppressed and suppressed. We are being maligned. We ourselves, we do not have the authority that Jehovah has given us. We are not wielding it. We are not seeing results as we ought to. We thank the Lord for our various ministries. We thank the Lord, but this is not the way we were promised. There is definitely something wrong. We have been patching and patching and patching. We need to know what Jehovah our master is saying. We need to understand what is going on. We need to ask him, what is your word in this season? what will make take us forward and i thank god for the text in ephesians chapter 2 from verse 20 but going up a little from verse 11 the bible tells us that we were once strangers we were once outcasts we were enemies of jehovah but jesus offering his blood he brought two fractions together he's chosen and us the gentiles in his body he joined us together in his body in one spirit he joined us together in one spirit so our text says that we were once strangers we were alienated but now we're joined together with Christ Jesus in his body in one spirit but folks we are still living like strangers we are still living like outcasts we are still living as if we are not joined together in one with Christ Jesus and why is that because we are not behaving as if we have access but Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 tells us that we have access let me read it very quickly Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 I'm going to read from a different version that my sister read from today Ephesians 2 20 it says that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 reading very quickly hallelujah praise the Lord it says from verse 19 it says and so you are no longer called outcasts and wanderers but your citizens with God's people members of God's holy family and residents of his household and verse 20 says you are rising like the perfectly fitted stones of the temple and your lives have been built up together upon the foundation laid by the apostles and the prophets and best of all you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building i want us to listen very very well it says that we are the body of christ we are the temple of christ that is who we are and we are built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles listen to this he says you are being built on a solid foundation the message of the prophets and of the apostles with jesus the anointed one the foundation that upholds believers the foundation that upholds christians is the message of the prophets and of the apostles what is our message our message is the word of god in our mouths and the lives that we live when prophet love more was speaking what did he say he says what we teach determines who how the flocks behave which means that our message and our lives shape humanity the lives that we live and the messages that we give shapes humanity. So what is wrong with humanity is in the hands of the prophets and of the apostles. 
So we are saying there's so much going on, we need help. And Jehovah is saying, I have released everything you need to you, all ye prophets, all ye apostles. Because in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, he says, the house of God, the temple of God, is being built on a solid foundation. And that solid foundation is the message of the prophets and the apostles with Jesus, the anointed one. So what is the body standing on? What is humanity standing on? The message of the prophets and of the apostles. And what is our message? The words that we speak and the lives that we live because our lives are the message of God to the people. Our words are God's message to the people. And that is what builds humanity. So we are screaming that everything is going upside down and the answer has been given to us by Christ Jesus. How are we shaping humanity? How are we building? What are we doing? But why are we not building according to pattern? Why are we not building according to pattern? We have been given a pattern, but we are not building according to that pattern. Why is that? There is something wrong. We are supposed to be empowering creation. We are supposed to be empowering humanity. But what is going on? It is because we are completely overtaken by the wisdom of Babylon. We are completely overtaken by the knowledge of Babylon. We have followed after Babylon. We all know who Babylon is. Babylon symbolizes rebellion. It symbolizes a life outside of Jehovah. Babylon says, I can do all things outside of God. And it seems that Christians, apostles and prophets, we have forgotten the sons of whom we are. So Babylon says to us, I don't need God to be able to do great and mighty things. I don't need God. I don't need God. I don't need God to build. I can give you riches. I can give you power. I can give you influence. I can give you affluence. I can give you enlightenment. I can give you dreams and I can give you visions. I can make you a new world of great opportunities and possibilities without God. Because Babylon says, I have science. I have technology. And like the prodigal son, we have journeyed far away from our father as far away as possible because we want affluence we want influence we want prosperity we want fame we want all these things and Babylon tells us that come out from under the rulership of God because the rulership of God is bondage the rulership of God is heavy it's a burden so come out from under that rulership and I will give you everything you want because God's rules are too stringent. They are too cumbersome. So come into a world of freedom and a world of independence. And we have listened to Babylon and we have become deprived. We have become depraved. We have become frustrated. We are starving and we have hired ourselves out to those who have nothing for us but pigs food. And the voice of the Lord has come to us today. Jehovah is saying, apostles, prophets, come back home. Come back home. I have for you robes and garments of splendor. I have for you a beautiful ring, which is the seal of sonship. Come back home. Babylon does not have anything original for you. Everything in Babylon is counterfeit. Everything Babylon is proclaiming is counterfeit. Racial superiority, same-sex marriage, multi-faith, uh, multi-faith, whatever, tolerance, uh, um, um, political correctness, uh, tolerance and accommodation of evil, uh, fluid sexuality, new agenda. These are the things that Babylon is proclaiming. They are saying we can do so many things outside of God. All they have is counterfeit, uh, but the original is in your hands. Uh, the original is in Christ Jesus. Uh, what did Jesus say? How do we know that the original is in Christ Jesus? Because he told us that he has given us 
access. Jehovah says he has given us access into the spirit. Look at verse 18 of that Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse, verse 18, it says, And now because we are united to Christ, we have equal and direct access in the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. What does access mean? Access means opportunity to enter. Opportunity to enter and to partake. We have been given the opportunity to enter into God and to partake. The opportunity to see the pattern. The opportunity to see Jehovah. The opportunity to be with the Father and everything thing that he owns and God has given us that commissioning his message to us the church today is remember the sons of whom you are remember your commissioning your commissioning is to take of me and give to the world come into the spirit realm come into my mind come into my heart stop staying far away from me in the physical realm that is why you are struggling you are struggling struggling with them in the world with the counterfeit. You can never ever, you can never top them at their own game. You can never conquer them on their own field. Come into your own field which is the spiritual realm. Enter into me. You want to do spiritual things physically? No. It's impossible. They are doing the things that they know. They are giving you medical imaging. They are giving you DNA technology. They are giving you genome sequencing. They are giving you different kinds of things. They say we can give you experiences of the spiritual kind outside of Jesus. They say we can give you an, another universe which is called metaversa and you will have experiences with nature you will have experiences with other human beings outside of the spirit of the living God and they will do these things because they want to tell you that science and technology is master is above God but we have the original we have Jehovah the living God we have the spirit of the most high we are the sons of God we are spirit Spirit beings born of Jehovah, we need to enter into the spirit realm and begin to import the reality of God into the physical realm. Our world is dying, waiting for us. Our world is in blackness and in darkness. Our world is seriously wounded and almost completely gone. Jehovah is looking on us to empower our environment. We need to get up and do this. We need to get up and do this. The Bible tells us that we are temples. He says that the humanity has to be built by us. And we need to understand that there is a way to build. There is a responsibility on us. Look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says. Look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 3 says uh, as I round off uh, first Corinthians chapter 3 we're reading for, from verse 9 it says we are gardeners uh, and field workers laboring with God uh, you are the vineyard the garden the house where God dwells uh, and like a skilled architect and master builder Paul says, I laid a foundation based upon God's grace given to me. Now others, who is he speaking of? He's speaking of you and I. Others will come along to build on that foundation. And each one serves in a different way. And each one is to build upon it with great care. You need to build upon it with great care. How are you building? Prophet, how are you building? Apostle, how are you building? What is your message to the people? What are you telling the people about Christ Jesus? What are you saying to them with your life? How are you building? 
building. Uh, this is a huge responsibility. F Ephesians chapter 5 uh, from verse 14. He says, awake you sleeper. Rise from your grave. Uh, and Jesus the anointed one will shine on you. Be very careful how you live. Be mindful of your steps. Don't run around like idiots as the rest of the world does. Instead, walk as the wise and make the most of every living and breathing moment. Prophet, apostle, Jehovah the living God has come to us this morning. He says uh, the empowerment of our world uh, lies on our shoulders. Uh, he will come and ask us, uh, what did you do with that pattern that I gave to you? Did you build according to a pattern? But uh, we are building according to our desires, according to our aspirations, according to our thirsts. According to our hungers, we are building according to our personal desires. We have forgotten Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Prophets, apostles, there is a pattern in heaven. Where is that pattern in your hand? How have you given that pattern to your world? Your world is suffering because you have not given them the pattern of the Lord God Jehovah. You have access into the spirit realm, yet you choose not to enter into the spirit realm. You stay here in the physical with the children of Babylon and you are struggling with meat with them and you are using their devices and pressing their innovations and all their, all their discoveries. You are luxurious in the world that Babylon has created for you. You don't know that on the inside of you, there is a world that Jehovah is looking for to emerge and to give to your environment. There is a world in God. He wants you to bring that world into the physical realm. Stop living in the world that Babylon has created for you. That world has nothing to offer you. That world is going into disarray and into destruction. Folks, apostles, prophets, take from God and give to your world. Jehovah, we give you praise and we give you glory. Oh, mighty God of all creation, we worship you this morning. We thank you for your words that has gone forth on this altar of fire. We thank you because those to whom that you have spoken, they will hear your words and your voice and it shall burn in them as a fire. It will consume the forbidden fruit that they have eaten. The wisdom of Babylon, the knowledge of Babylon that they have stuffed their throats with. The fire of the living God will consume it out of each and every one of us today. In the name of Jesus, we shall no longer be satisfied to sit with Babylon. We will arise and enter into the spirit realm and impart the reality of God into the physical realm. We will arise as creators because we are co-creators with Christ Jesus. The Bible says we are made in the image and in the likeness of God. The Bible says he has given unto us power and dominion to call those things which be not as though they were. We shall take our mantle of authority and we will empower our world. Thank you, Jehovah. We give you praise and we give you glory. We have heard you, Lord, and we go and we shall walk in your word, even to the performance thereof. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of the living God say, Amen. Hallelujah, Jehovah, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All over this place, Akimbo Karia, Olekezi Prevozon Taraboske Gedilia, Osheketo, Mbrata Karebaraboso Prevozon Taraboshaya. Under that unction, every ministry that has been ailing, every ministry.
ministry that has been struggling. I speak the word of the Lord to you today. Arise in the name of Jesus. Every crippled ministry, every crippled work, today in the name of Jesus, I say rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Begin to operate in that which Jehovah has asked you to do. To those who have been weak, to those who have been lily livered, to those who have lacked courage, today let the confidence and the courage of Jehovah enter into you. In the name of Jesus, from today you shall no longer be politically correct, but you shall be spiritually sound. In the name of Jesus, receive courage, receive power, receive boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ, every illness on this platform at the sound of my voice dry up in the name of Jesus. The fire of the living God devours you. Every illness and sickness represented here. Hear ye the voice of the living God. The Bible says the strangers shall be afraid out of their secret and close places. You are a stranger in the body of that child of God. Dry up right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have been bound. Those who have been shackled. I loose you from your chains today. Receive liberty. Receive liberty. Receive deliverance. In the name of Jesus. All over this place. I set it on fire for Jehovah. I set this platform on fire for Jehovah. I set your lives and destinies on fire for Jehovah. Receive the fire of the living God. Go in that fire and be a soldier of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah.